Denmark in autumn. A cozy summer cottage in the dunes, the rough coast, fresh fish, long walks, cozy evenings by the fireplace. Just the right way to relax after our adventurous summer road trips. We set our base camp near Wiedersenne on the Danish west coast. We use the arrival day and drink Danish beer, buy fresh fish and then end the evening in our pool. Well rested, we start the next morning to explore the surrounding nature. Via Nimindegab, we make our way towards Tippern. However, the wind is so strong that we can't stay on the Outlook Tower for too long. In the evening hours, we explore small spur roads there, which lead from the main road to the fjord coast and turn out to be real off-road tracks in the end. After that, the sun rewards us this evening with a unique play of colors on the Danish sky. On the eastern shore of the Rinköbing fjord lies the small village of Stauning. Surrounded by farmland and peat soil, we find the Stowning Whiskey Distillery here. We booked a guided individual tour of the distillery and our guide Carsten took us on a trip through Stowning Whiskey's history and the entire production process from ground malting to storage. Here it all started with the common idea of nine friends. They wanted to distill a local Danish whiskey, so they bought local ingredients and rudimentary equipment and used a vacant old butcher's shop for their first distilling experiments. No wonder they initially crushed the malt in a meat grinder. After some time, the distillery in its first state produced 200 to 400 liters of distillate in the first few years. The intention was to grow, of course, and an old farm should become the new home of a distillery. But the beginning was difficult. One of the financing banks recommended to discard the idea of whiskey and rather open a bakery. A turning point in the history of Stowning Whiskey was the moment when the famous whiskey expert Jim Murray tasted the noble drops and praised the whiskey beyond all measure. The financing was then finally successful and the old farm was bought and when I visited the distillery for the first time in 2014, malting, distilling and bottling were taking place in two converted barns. Since then, as you can see, the distillery has grown so much that today only the shop and the tasting rooms are located in these old stables. We can only recommend booking an individual tour here. This way you can hear everything loud and clear and you can understand everything. And you have the opportunity to experience the distillery with all your senses. We smell and taste our way through the production, taste here and taste there, and discover a small secret bar between the barrels in the warehouse. The whiskey tasting is the final highlight of our tour, and our secret favorite is the Stowning Rye Whiskey. For me, it can't be compared to the sometimes boring North American standard rye whiskies. Those who have already written off rye whiskey can change their minds with this one. We taste the full-bodied grain and a gentle sweetness. Around the whole Rinkobing fjord, there are several fjord churches to visit. Especially at Thanksgiving, these are beautifully decorated in autumn. The gravestones in the cemeteries bear witness to many maritime tragedies from earlier times. The sea has claimed its victims and the memory here is still present.
some of the fjord churches are so close to the fjord that they have access to lovely little fjord harbors, so it is worth following the paths towards the fjord. About 75 kilometers north of Wiedesenne, we drive through the nature reserve of Gellerodde near Lemwig. With our defender we make our way through the terrain to a shelter in the middle of the forest. Here travelers can spend the night free of charge in the wooden huts in the open nature. However, we only stay for a snack and a coffee and a little rest. Afterwards, we make our way to the beach of Lemwick. Already the empty shells on the shore reveal what can be hunted here. Oysters have settled and can be caught by anyone who dares to enter the cold water. While catching the oysters, we also find some other animals in the sea, which are quite interesting. After just under half an hour, we have caught almost 30 oysters. And for this, we may reward ourselves with a cold beer back at the car. On the way back, we visit the iconic red lighthouse of Borbjerg and its rugged cliffs. Michel feeds some horses there but then suddenly the weather changes and we are glad that we can visit an art exhibition inside the former lighthouse keeper's house. In a rain break we have a warm cacao with cream, but the rain returns and we prefer to drink our hot drink in the car. Back at our vacation cabin, we clean and open the oysters we caught. We eat some of them raw and fresh with onion vinaigrette and lemon. The others are baked. A little butter, red onions, a little Tabasco and a lot of cheese for gratinating. Bon appétit! North of Wiedesenne, the annual Sand Sculpture Festival in Sonderwijk invites you to admire delicate works of art made of sand. The various works of art show excerpts from fairy tales or history, interwoven with sometimes strong political gestures and always a joke or two. You should also visit the Skjern Engen Nature Reserve on the southeastern shore of the Rinkerbing Fjord for walks or bike rides. You can expect the rich bird life, beautiful hiking trails with partly free roaming horses and cable ferries with which we can move across the waterways there. Near Lotbjerg Hede, at the northern end of the Rinkerbing Fjord, we visit Jette's ostrich farm. Ostriches emus and other animals await us at the farm. And if you are brave enough, you can feed the not so clever animals, let them peck your hand or even stroke their long necks. It is especially worth taking a look at the nursery. After the tour, a little ostrich egg liquor is a good companion to coffee and homemade cake there. There are plenty of museums in this region, especially for the whole family. A visit to the Viking Museum in Borghaun is a must. Here we explore the former Viking dwellings and workshops, their sacrificial site, a church and Viking ships. We 
we try our hand at crafts, hunting, and bake small loaves of bread on the fire. We start the day with coffee and fresh Danish pastries at Winterleje Haun Fjord Harbor before we start today's trip up north. Our destination today is the Stranding Museum in Torsminde. Already on the outside, we are captivated by the countless anchors, some of unknown origin. Those anchors were mostly found by fishermen who came across the last witnesses of tragic shipwrecks off the Danish west coast doing their work. Inside, a journey through centuries of seafaring and its tragedies continues. With more than 6,000 estimated shipwrecks, the west coast of Denmark is literally a ship graveyard. The exhibition pays special attention to the worst of the disasters, which happened at Christmas 1811. On the morning of the 24th December, the HMS St. George and the HMS Defense, two large English warships, were stranded with a total of 1,400 seamen on board. Defense was immediately smashed to pieces by wind and waves, while the St. George was able to hold its own against the hostile ocean for several days. But due to the weather conditions, no rescuers could be sent out. On late Christmas Eve that year, about 150 people were still alive on the wreck. But only two days later, when the sea was finally calm in the morning, there was no one to be seen anymore. The sea engulfed more than 1,300 people in those days. Their bodies drifted south along the coast with a strong current. Only 17 survivors out of 1,400 seamen were to live to see another Christmas. Back in Wiedersenne, we visit Omju. The organization collects plastic from Denmark's beaches, processes the trash into granules, melts them down on site and thereby creates something new. The large hall also serves as an event location for live concerts and the bar invites you to a coffee or cocktail. Michelle is happy about her new earrings, made of garbage, collected on the Danish west coast, just outside Wiedersenne. Those who have not yet traveled back in time now have the opportunity to do so. Abelines Gard is a museum farm, or rather an old dune farm, whose furnishings still show life 100 years ago. Once the home of Abelina, her five children and the beach bailiff, furniture and pictures here also bear witness to countless strandings on the west coast. We write our guest book entry at the exact same table under the old telephone where Abelina used to coordinate the rescue teams in case of threatening strandings. This place calms us. We look out the window at the same dunes and at the same sky that Abelina and her children looked at. And only the passing cars remind us that we are still in the year 2022. Opposite Abelina's guard, there is an old beach telephone next to the lifeboat shed. In the case of marine distress, this used to ensure communication between the beach and Abelina's guard. While we are taking Abelina's call, the sun really comes out and invites us for a last walk on the beach. We enjoy the dunes, the scent of sand and sea buckthorn and the heavenly tranquility of the sea. So much relaxation in such a short time. In 
the evening hours of our last day of holiday, we watch the steadily circling light of the lighthouse in Neverlingbeck. The Danish West Coast has once again shown us many new things, even though we have been seeking our peace and relaxation here in autumn for decades already. See you next time, Denmark. Thank you for allowing us to come to rest once again. If you liked this travel documentary, we would be happy about a thumbs up for this video or about your subscription to our channel. You can find more travel reports on our channel, for example, about our road trips through Slovenia or Greece. We wish you good travels. See you next time.